So this question says, a uh, rocket takes off from Earth and reaches some speed um, that in 10 seconds. Hmm. Wonder if uh, I'm supposed to take into account the gravity um, during all this, but um, well, let's see. <laughs> um, so we have some rocket of some initial mass M and it's uh, taking off from Earth, and it's uh, reaching some height. Um, and it's got some different uh, mass. Um, and it's uh, moving at some speed, 99 meters per second, in 10 seconds. I wonder if that's relevant. Um, let's see. Uh, if the exhaust speed is uh, 1,700 meters per second, ah, so while the rocket is firing off, this is kind of the midpoint thing. So the way rocket propulsion works is it uh, ejecting fuel with some exhaust speed. And during this interaction, momentum is conserved. So the momentum that's carried away by the exhaust gas has to be balanced out with the um, with the uh, with the momentum change of the remainder of the rocket. So that's how we should approach it. Um, now your textbook might have some formula derived. Uh, let me do this uh, based on first two principles from scratch. So I'm going to make some approximations, uh, which the system might say it gives the wrong answer. In that case, I will just uh, refine those approximations. Uh, the very first approximation I'm going to make is I'm going to assume that all 100 kilograms of exhaust is moving at this speed, uh, 1,700 meters per second, in the frame of Earth. Um, because as the rocket speeds up, that's not actually going to be true because of the rocket's own speed, because this is speed in the rocket's frame. So in Earth frame, this will actually change over time. But I'm looking at this velocity, it's much smaller compared to that. So I think I'm making a good approximation. We'll see if it results in an answer that the system says is correct. Um, so under this uh, approximation, we can basically treat this as a conservation of momentum question where this is my initial um, snapshot, rocket sitting on Earth, zero velocity. And my final snapshot will look like rocket is, uh, the remainder of the rocket is moving upward at that speed. And I have downward the thing. It's moving as, um, have some mass, small m, and it has this exhaust velocity. And uh, one constraining equation I would have is that the uh, total mass of the rocket should be its uh, initial mass of the rocket is its a final mass plus the mass of the fuel burned. Uh, yeah, so we'll be using that. So, so let me use conservation of momentum. Um, I'm saying momentum is conserved because this kind of looks like a collision type question. Interaction happening over a limited duration of time and um, yeah, just to uh, you know, things happening. Um, now, there's something I'm ignoring as we do. So especially if you're saying momentum is conserved, we are basically saying we can neglect external forces like gravity. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that's another, a second approximation I'm making. And if the system says my answer is wrong, we'll come back, take a gravity into account and see if that's what I need to do. So, okay. So we do those two approximations, one, one, um, all of fuel ejected all at once to gravity negligible. Um, this is the equation I would have set up. The initial momentum, zero, is equal to the sum of the two final momenta. Momentum of the remainder of the rocket plus momentum of the, the ejected portion of the rocket. So it'll be its mass times, let me use the sign to indicate the direction of the exhaust, minus V exhaust. Okay, um, so let's uh, count our unknowns. Um, 
so looks like we don't know the total initial mass so and we technically don't know this so we have two unknowns i think those are the two unknowns i know everything else uh, even have this extra information about time um, so yeah i have two unknowns one two equations i should be able to solve for it uh, let me eliminate m prime using this so i have m prime is equal to initial mass minus the mass of the fuel so plugging that in i get uh, zero is equal to um, that combination of masses times v plus uh, or let me just pull out the minus sign so i don't confuse myself minus small m v just um, i think i can solve for this uh, big m uh, let me do that algebra in my head if uh, you need to pause the video <laughs> make sure your algebra <laughs> agrees with my final answer that uh, is um, small m plus um, small m times you could just divided by uh, the speed of the rocket yeah, I think that's right. And I can simplify it a little bit. I can factor out the small m, 1 plus this ratio of equal just per uh, speed of the rocket. So let me plug in the numbers based on this and see if the system says it's correct. There's a chance that it says it's not correct. And I'll make the corrections for these two approximations one at a time. I don't want to do more work than I need to. So, okay, mass of the fuel burn times one plus um, the ratio of EQ just 1700 to the uh, speed of the rocket. Okay, 1817 um, is what the answer is here. Let me put that in and see if it says that's correct. There's a chance it doesn't. All right, um, so the first thing that I should have correct is especially because they gave us this time information. Like one way that time information is useful would be um, it will tell us the external impulse. Um, so because when you look at this, there's gravity on this whole thing. Like if you're drawing free body diagram of the system, um, then what you have is uh, you have the the whole thing initial mass and downward mg and of the whole system including this and that um, there's no other force gravity is the one force so which means this uh, will lead to impulse of uh, force times duration of time and what this means is the change of momentum so this leads to modification of this conservation of momentum equation so we started out with a zero and um, so this portion so how, what's the best way to rewrite it um so i think the way that's conceptually least confusing for me is to write it this way a uh, change of momentum so my momentum final minus my momentum initial should be this so you know mg big mg times delta t i have this is my momentum final so m plus m prime v plus a small m minus v equals just um, that minus zero is equal to m g times delta t. So I'm writing this out just to see uh, how I need to modify that equation. So if this is staying on this side and staying positive, then this needs to move over. Yes, okay, I need to do plus mg times delta t. And I think that's right. When I add this here, the effect of that is that it tends to like make this smaller. So I think that makes sense. Yeah, okay, so um, here having put all this in. Uh, yeah, I think I can keep that plus, um, so plus mg times delta t. Um, so imagining redoing this algebra, what I need to put in is, um, oh well, yeah. <laughs> sorry, this algebra is getting hard to do in my head. So let me just do this properly step by step. So let me collect all the like terms uh, on the right hand side. 
that's going to be uh, MB um, plus MG times delta T and collect all the other terms on the left hand side moving this over that's MB exhaust and then move that over plus a small MV okay so on the right hand side I can factor out them so I have V plus G delta T uh, divide that out to get M so my final expression for M from all that is M V exhaust plus M V divided by not big M, no, leaving that alone. Uh, v plus G delta T. Okay, so let me plug in the numbers there. I don't think I'm going to try to simplify that. It seems um, not really possible to simplify. Okay, so I have uh, 100 times uh, exhaust speed, 1700 plus. Um, Again, 100 times the rocket speed, 99, uh, divided by uh, rocket speed, 99, plus G, 9.8, times uh, delta T, 10 seconds. Okay, so we have 913. Wait, that makes... Um, must have done something wrong. Um, I made two signers. They somehow canceled each other out. What am I doing? Um, <laughs> let me just give this a try um, because I am suspecting a sign error. Um, 9, 13, 10. I don't think that should be right. Oh. Sorry. Um, um, so uh, as you might notice, I haven't done uh, a lot of these rocket propulsion questions, and um, which is my excuse for not having all that good of an intuition for this type of questions. Because the intuition is a product of your experience. And whatever you don't have a lot of experience with, your intuition is going to be weak. So I thought uh, when I have... Um, when I have uh, this influence added, that should make the initial mass of the rocket larger. That's what I intuitively thought. And I think that intuition is wrong because um, it comes down to the amount of fuel burned should be a greater portion of the rocket if there's something pulling the thing down. So to make this 100 kilogram greater portion is to make the initial mass of the rocket smaller. Um, and just to finish correcting the mistakes, so somehow I guess when I was writing these equations down, I made the two mistakes that canceled out. I forgot to write down minus a sign here. And when I moved this over, I forgot to put a minus sign on that resulted in the correct sign here. But it's, you know, two sign errors canceling each other out, which is uh, what you should aim for. So... So yeah, th this is the question. So I have corrected for gravity. So apparently that's a significant. I need to correct it for that. And I think this one, it, uh, it must not be significant. I don't know if the program dancer actually takes that in. Yeah, so program dancer, I had, if I had to guess, it probably uses a formula from textbook and actually takes into account uh, this approximation that I made. And the reason that approximation is good is, well, um, this is so much bigger than that. So, uh, so that's really the justification for approximation. And uh, the, the justification, the kind of the trial here is that you still resulted in an answer that's within 1% of the correct answer. So uh, now if uh, we are looking at rocket reaching higher speed, then we would have to account for uh, what I didn't account for this time around.